if I can have your attention. Uh, you know, as you know that um, there are some, well, everything is important, nothing is unimportant, but there are certain topics in this track which are super important because they would be showing up many, many times. First of all, they would show up as a content, as an important topic in your track. Secondly, they, some shades of this topic would be showing up in your ongoing project, which you're doing with Utrecht University uh, of Applied Sciences. And then they would show quite, quite significantly in your uh, uh, valuation and risk management project, which you will be doing with this uh, Canadian University. And then in the CFA project, which is the ultimate project at the global level, it would be very much obvious. But I want to train you right in the beginning that you don't face those challenges in the future. So I would be doing reverse engineering. Usually I teach theory first and then I give the example. But today I will start with the example and wherever necessary, I will give you the knowledge about the theory. So we will be having very hand-on approach we'll be applying to understand this. The idea is that there is a reasoning behind it. Uh, if, for instance, and, and by the way, the, the, the whole discussion would be coming from this spreadsheet, which I have shared today. So if you want, you can even open it in your computers so that we go together. But the idea of this entire exercise is that if, for instance, I go to Yahoo Finance, let's say, yeah. And by the way, uh, this task we shall be doing in the context of Walmith, which is a very popular, very big engineering company in England. And they're, you know, it's not far away from this place where they are located as well. There's a big production capacity we have, you know, very not far away. So if I type in Walmith here, You find that there is a stock price at the moment. And you can see that during the whole day, uh, the market started at 10 o'clock in the morning in Finland, and now it's about one o'clock. Uh, well, it's more than one o'clock now. And you can see that there has been a lot of up and down in Walmart stock price. Uh, I mean, around 11 o'clock, the price was quite good. About noonish, the stock price went down. And since last, one or two hours, uh, Walmart is struggling in terms of its price. Maybe after some time, we see the price goes up. Make sense? This is Walmart's share price. Share price, the, the real-time share price. And if you want to find the market value of Walmart, it changes every moment. Can you see that? I mean, if there's a green light flashing here, it means that the stock price goes down. So if one share multiplied by the number of shares of the company, that goes, that gives you the total market value of Walmart. It means that the market value of Walmart or any company for that matter can change minute to minute, even after a few seconds. Look, it went, it was something 0 0.69 and now it went down further to something like uh, 0 0.79, yeah? So things are not going good at the moment for Walmart. So the idea I'm trying to, uh, and if the green light flashes, it means the price is going up. So the things, the stock price changes every moment or after a few moments. What I'm trying to say, this is the market price in the real market, but you are, you may also be interested as an analyst, as a researcher, as a student, you will also be interested in one more price of Walmart. And that price is called theoretical price, equilibrium price. What is the real capable price? I mean, what Walmart is capable of having in the market? If there's no problem, the market is, can you shut up? 
uh, if the market is exactly the way it should be, if there is, if reality and theory are same, see, if the real life and the theoretical life are same, then what should be the price of uh, one minute? Or you are interested, should you buy at this price or should you sell at this price? Is this price over than, un is overvalued or undervalued? Look, to, you want a comparison, but I hope you understand that in order to compare something once, you need two values. Does it make sense? If I say that you got 75% score in the exam, does it show good score or a bad score? You cannot comment unless you know that, you know what, 75% is good score because uh, the minimum passing score is 50%. So you can say that it's good. We are above the average. But if I only say you got 75% score, it doesn't show anything. You want to say something? Yeah. 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 You can compare, but then, then the thing is that you're comparing Walmart with another entity called stock exchange. But what I'm I want to push you to go even many steps further and deeper and compare Walmart with Walmart. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That you you want to compare Walmart with Walmart. When I say Walmart with Walmart, what it means? It means that I want you to compare the Walmart's market price with Walmart's fair price. Share price, for example, is two euro per share. But mm -hmm. uh, in the real life, people investor doesn't pay uh, more than two and for example, two point eight for each share. So we mm -hmm. cannot say that three euro is a kind of um, real price. Mm -hmm. Two point eight, which is people um, tend to pay and buy them uh, stocks. Mm -hmm. Now, if you, for example, have Walmart. At, when you look at 22.68, should you sell or should you not sell it? Should you hold it? Or if you don't have Walmart, should you buy it or should you still wait for it? You don't know. Exactly. We need to know now. This is what we will do to know it. Does it make sense? You, you see my point? As you said, I don't know. Now, in this task, when you do the valuation, you will know that is it overpriced? Is it underpriced? If you are a value-based investor, you buy cheaper and sell expensive. If you find that the price is 22.68, whereas the price should be 25, the price should be 25, the price is 22.68, then as a value-based investor, you find it cheaper. It's like you say that, like when you, when you go for shopping, and when you want to buy some, let's say, laptop, you haven't seen the prices yet. You think that, you know what, the kind of laptop I'm looking for, if I get for 700 euros, up to 700 euros, I will pay, I will buy it. If it fulfills all my specifications. You have some idea in mind. This is the theoretical price of laptop. Now you go there and you find that the kind of laptop you're looking for is actually selling for 500 euros. Will it bring smile on your face? It will bring smile on your face, yeah? It means that as a value-based consumer, you find that you are willing to pay 700, but you're buying it for 500. Technically, you are saving 200 euros. And what you do? You're going to buy it. But that is not the one way of thinking. There's one more way of thinking. You are willing to pay 700, and the market is, paying, um, the market price is 500. You may, instead of buying, you'd rather don't buy it. You wait that maybe the price tomorrow goes down to 450 and then I buy it. 
You see my point? So there might be different ways of thinking, but all one common thread is that you cannot make a decision only if you have only one price. If you have no idea that the you are willing to pay up to 700 euros, uh, then you go to the Giganti or any shop and you find that there's a laptop selling for 500 euros. You cannot make out if it is expensive or cheaper. Can you make out? Because that's a standalone price. You can't make out. It means that whenever you say that, hey, you know what, something is cheaper or something is expensive, something is overpriced, something is underpriced, you always compare the actual price with your notional price. Notional price, theoretical price, conceptual price, equilibrium price, implicit price, market price, real price, explicit price. There's so many ways to express it. You see my point? And in this task, we shall be studying how to do this, how to create this theoretical price so that you can compare the reality with the theory. Does it make sense? So that you know that now I can make a comparison. And based on that comparison, you make a decision to buy or not to buy. Uh, if you're selling something, like for example, you have a house now and you, fi you find out that, you know what? At the moment, the house which I have, the fair price, if, if I really feel gives me pleasure, if I feel happy about, uh, my house should be sold at 150,000 euros. And you find out that the real market price is actually 130,000 euros. It means that you think that your house is underpriced, undervalued. Now you have two reactions. Reaction number one, you wait the price until it goes up. Make sense? The other way is that you could be in a rush and you find that who knows, tomorrow price goes down even further. Not 130,000, but 120,000 euros. So it's better to sell now than tomorrow. But all these decisions, rational decisions, well thought decisions, you discuss with your friends, you discuss, discuss with the family. You think, so that is a rational decision, but you can only make it if you are able to compare two prices, two values, one comparison. To make two comparisons, you have three values. To make three comparisons, you have to have four values. So to make one comparison, you must have two values. The first value is so obvious. I will not lecture you for this thing. You just go to Yahoo Finance and see it. But I would be basically, you know, emphasizing you to learn to calculate this theoretical price, the fair price, which should be, which is based on what should be the price. And then you compare reality versus theory. And then you make a decision, uh, is the price over or under? Does it make sense? That's what we are going to do in this task, okay? Uh, this is the price of one share, but if you multiply this share price with the number of stocks Walmart has, you can find out uh, a concept, and that concept is called market cap. That is called market capitalization. So one share price multiplied by number of shares would give you the market value of Walmart which at the moment is 4.21 billion, uh, is it euros? Um, yeah, yeah, it's 4.21 billion euros. Again, when you look at 4.21 billion euros, it looks a very big amount, but still you're not sure. Is it, a, is it higher than should be price or lower than should be price? So it means you need to calculate another price called theoretical price. And that's what we will do now. All right, now, is the, is the background clear to you? So of course, we'll, we'll compare Walmart with the rest of the market, but we want to become even more as an analytical. When you become some financial analyst, 
even your clients will be very smart people. They can check this website, Yahoo Finance. It's so simple. But they will ask you that, hey, what is your notion of the should be price? So you compare is price with the should be price. And then you decide, is it overvalued or undervalued? Like we do in the house, like we do in case of laptop. If you want to buy a business, this is exactly what you do. If you want to sell a business, this is exactly what you do. So this is like a valuation part that we do, you know? Uh, yes, uh, you want to say something? Well, uh, if, uh, like, uh, Well, that is a fundamental analysis uh, when we have the accounting values. Uh, but in this case, this is a part of your technical analysis. Technical analysis where we are using the stock market information to reach at it. The two type of, of analysis. In the fundamental analysis, we take some business fundamentals like uh, earnings per share, return on capital, uh, return on assets. So these are some price to earning ratio. These are some business fundamentals or financial fundamentals that we analyze historically. We can compare Walmart with Walmart over many years and see if Walmart is doing good or bad. Or we can compare Walmart right now with the nearest competitor, for example, ABB or some other company, yeah, some engineering company, and then make a comparison that is Walmart overpriced or underpriced. What we're going to do now is even more sophisticated. We are not comparing Walmart with any market index. We are not going to compare Walmart with any competitor. We are going to compare Walmart with Walmart. But of course, we, will have, we have to cross all these steps and hurdles to reach that final stage. Yeah, makes sense. You want to say something? Okay, all good? All right, let's go then. The first thing I did here is that I use this link. I Wherever necessary, I shared the link with you. I used NASDAQ OMX Nordic index, uh, not index, but the web page to derive these values. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, I took one year data, one year daily prices, one year is enough to make a decision. We don't have to go 20 years back because that makes no, makes no sense. 20 years ago, things were different. I, we want to see the values which are immediately in the, in the recent past, not too historic. So what I do, I took the data from this web page, this one, I hope you can see. Um, and I took almost one year. So I started taking the data from 12th of September, 22 last year till 11th of September 23, which is day before yesterday. So this is the most recent values we could get. Yeah. Uh, and then I took the Walmart's closing price here. So yesterday, uh, day before yesterday, the market closed here 22.95. Yeah. Previous calculation, there's some gaps. That is because of weekends. Yeah. So. Why is there one day? Huh? Why is there one day? This is Monday. Who's missing? Yesterday. Because I made it yesterday and there was no price of yesterday available. Mm -hmm. You want me to add 12 September also? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is, <laughs> this is the closing price of Walmart uh, for one year. Yeah. And I hope you can see that the first cell is uh, 
uh, row five, yeah? And I hope that the last row should be 255 something. Let's see. Mm, yeah, 257. So it, in other words, there were 253. A calendar year has 365 or 366 days, right? Depending upon its leap year. But uh, a working year is having about 252, 253 days. So it's a 255 working days. It's obvious because out of 365, we have 104 weekends. And then we have some public holidays and things like that. So I think this is a quite realistic that about 250 something working days we have in a, in a, in a year. All right. The first lesson as a student of finance, you should learn never make a decision based on the absolute price of the stock. Always, I mean, if, if a company stock is selling for 200 euros and another company stock is selling for two euros, that doesn't mean that the one with 200 euros is more successful. Never make a decision based on the absolute prices. Always make a decision based on the relative prices. A relative, comparative, or in simple words, in the financial language, we call it the return. Not the stock price, but the stock return. And as you can see here, what I did here is Walmith return. Imagine today the stock price is 200. Stock X, stock Y, the stock price is 2 euros. Who seems more powerful? If you are a lay, lay person, what would you say? Who's more successful? The one with the stock price of 200 or the 2 euros? If you're not a finance student and you somebody told you, that the stock with the more price is more successful. You may end up making a wrong decision and you may end up saying that the one with 200 euros is, is better than one with two euros. But imagine day before yesterday, the stock price was 210 euros. And yesterday it was 200 euros. It's not progress. It's a failure. It's a bad performance. On the other hand, there's a one stock with two euros values now, but maybe yesterday it was one euro. It rose 100%. So never judge the performance of a stock based on the price. Always go further and make return. And what's the formula? Then the different ways, but I, this is what I did yesterday. So it's, it's a natural log. Uh, the price, the current price, mine divide by the the previous, immediately previous price. So, if you want to compare the the stock return performance of eighth of September and eleventh of September, I remember ninth and tenth, there were two weekends, right? So we don't count it, and then we find out that in comparison to uh, Friday last week, on Monday, the stock price was better. However, on Friday last week, it was worth it was worse than Thursday. Thursday was worse than Wednesday. Wednesday was worse than Tuesday. Monday was better than the previous Friday. So every time you see a plus here, it means the stock price, the stock return improved, and every time improved over the previous day. And every time there's a negative, the stock return is worse than the previous day. Is it fine or not? Remember, we all need to understand step by step. If some people learn more and others remain behind, uh, that's not good. I can wait for you. I can be even slower, but don't keep the things in your head. If you have a bit of doubt, speak out. Yes. It's a natural logarithm. Natural logarithm. Maybe if you have the French or the other language, 
there must be some substitute word for logarithm. Hmm? Yeah, Ln. So yeah. Are you fine, Sarah? You good? Little uh, about what? Yeah, this is the data we got from the website. Okay, so this is this is what it is. These numbers are given, and these numbers I got from uh, from this page. Yeah, make sense. Uh, I would recommend you because it's getting recorded. It's a good idea that I can quickly show you how I got these numbers because otherwise, when you guys do, you may struggle. Okay. So now, because we, we're, we're a little bit going off the track, but it's a good thing that uh, Sarah raised this point. Um, this website, which I'm going to show you, will be very useful. It will save your life a lot. OMX Nordic. Mm, this is a bit crazy because it comes all the way here. So if I go here to OMX Nordic, yeah. Um, this is the database which keeps the stock prices of all the stocks and basically in the not, not only in Finland, but it also includes the Nordic countries, including Sweden, Denmark, uh, even Iceland, and to some extent, Norway as well. Shares, right? So click shares. Mm -hmm. Shares mean the name of the company. Now, Valmet have got just name any company in Finland or any 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 company in Nordic region. Any anything? Any guesses? Finnair. Look, when you start typing. It, it, it matches your search. Click Finnair. You basically get all the resume of Finnair here. It's like a, you get all the details of Finnair, yeah? But then you will ask me, Shab, you showed a Excel sheet. Like I showed you an Excel sheet, right? For Valmith. But this is a web page. Where is Excel? No worries. It says, show history. This is what is happening today. Mm -hmm. But you may be interested in the history. One year, what has been happening for the last one year? Like I showed you in case of all myth, we have a full one year's data, right? Show history. You decide what day you want. Uh, let's say we say we let's say we want to go one year back. No worries. Look what I'm gonna do. I do nothing else but I change the year. Now the starting data would be from 12th of September 2022. Make sense? You can change. By default, this is 23. And if you see here, you can see that there's a whole trend for the one year, right? But again, this is not, this is still not Excel. This is still a web page. Yeah. There is a CSV function here. CSV means that now if I click this, all the data will go to the, will be exported to the spreadsheet. And if, let's do it. Uh, This is the old one, but it, it will show up. Look, here we go. Can you see the date? All of there are additional information. We don't care. We don't care. All we need is this thing. This is what we need. We delete all other things and keep it. So simple. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly the price of Walmith. I chose. I, I, I on purpose 
took some other company than Walmart so that you can see that it works for all the companies. You can choose a time. If you want, look, you have a choice. I took 22, right? I could have gone back to 2012 also. Normally, these companies are very old in Finland and they maintain the data for loss at least for 20 years. So, but we don't need to go back for 20 years. One year's data is enough. Because look, one year data means about 255, 258 days. In statistic, any analysis which contains more than 100 observations is quite decent analysis. But in our case, we have about 250 observations, so we are safe. Are we good? Excellent. You um, uh, big question. I think you in OMX Nordic, the name says you can only find the Nordic companies. Yeah. Uh, but for example, if you go to, uh, if you go to, uh, investing.com or even Yahoo finance, you can find French companies, German companies. And by the way, um, I have been to CSC, the, the, the CSC exchange. And they also have very good data, no problem. I, I have done analysis of French companies very often and there's no problem at all. You can find the companies with no problem at all. I, I, I don't see any reason, yeah. Are we good? Do we still have any doubt? If you have, please clarify. I can, I can take five hours to expl explain it to you, but make sure that your fundamentals are clear. Uh, learning at it at the higher level is a child's play, but learning the fundamentals sometimes can be a bit confusing. Yeah. So if you have any bit of doubt, I, I keep I keep moving ahead. But anytime you want me to bring back to the basics, uh, don't shy. Let me know. Hmm? We are learning a very important topic, so it should be understood to everybody. Otherwise, there's no purpose. Now you understand why. I didn't analyze the price. Instead, I wanted return. Mm -hmm. Return is something more uh, important than, yeah. It's like we learned that uh, I made a deal um, and I made a profit of 5%. I made a profit of 10%. We never say I made a profit of this amount because that amount doesn't show, is it higher or lower? Okay. so I. Do it again. Um, one more thing, maybe uh, it's a more like a function of Excel than anything else. Um, I can do maybe in the other form or something. I don't know how good you are uh, in Excel, but I can tell you something that this is one year, right? I'm, I'm just moving, moving it to another sheet so that, and the formula was uh, we use natural logarithm. Can you see? The moment I click one letter, I got some suggestions. Is, is equal to is always you do before you operate, you do any Excel function. So L N, does it show? The first value, because that is a, the current value, divide by the previous value. And I got one value here. If you see, you see there's a, there's a white cross here. Can you see the white cross moving? If I bring it and it become black, if you click this, it calculate all the way down. You don't have to even drag it down. So this is a smart way of doing that. You don't need to drag because sometimes your data is having some thousands of uh, you know, rows. So if you just, once this white thing become black, click this, it will go all the way down to calculate. All right, now we move back to the sheet. So we get the Valmid Val return, okay? We good? Okay. We move on. And remember one thing that you don't have to remember, it comes automatically by default. 
that your price values are up to 257 rho, but your return is ending at 256. You know why? Because you cannot find the return of the last value because you don't know the price of 11th of September here. That's why this value would be always one less than. Hmm? In statistics, we call it degree of freedom. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Okay. Are we good? Questions, comments, doubts, confusions. You have? Uh, can you pause? Make sure that whenever I'm... Yeah. So... In, in, Sarah, are you okay? Yeah. Um, Imalka? Yeah. What do you... <laughs> statistics are those calculations which are only introducing your data to the audience, but it's not real deep analysis, but it's a very on the surface type of uh, the first handshake with the data. You are introducing how your data look like to the audience to get familiar. Exactly. And then we use, for example, minimum value, the maximum value, the average and the price change. Okay, right? But before I reach that stage, I want to show something else. And that something else is that this is only Valmet, okay? We need to find the index values also. We want to see that how much Valmet has been behaving in response to the overall market change. I hope you remember that Valmet is a Finnish company. Therefore, I have to compare Valmet with the Finnish index of stock price. You know the concept of index? Hmm? The concept of index is that you are comparing one company with the overall market performance. The whole market, like for example, I say that there are 50 students in my class and the average marks of 50 students are six out of 10. It means the market performance is six. The average market performance is six. Somebody has got nine marks. It means the student has overperformed the market or the class index. Somebody got three marks, the student has underperformed than the market index. So what we do here, if you look at the name 25, there's an index in, there's an index in Helsinki Stock Exchange of top 25 companies in Helsinki Exchange, the fifth, top 25 Finnish companies. So the average of 25 companies makes the OMX uh, Helsinki index. But you don't need to worry because I'm going to show it to you. We go back to the same web page which I showed you, which is here. This time we click indexes. Remember, index means, in simple words, index means the indicator. Indi Remember, we say index finger? Why we say index? Because we indicate something. Okay, and in this case, the index is the overall market. It doesn't like no, no, the whole industry, the, the similar, basically not even the industry. We are comparing it with the market. You know, the top 25 companies, they can come from, any, of course, you can have the industry index as well. You can have a sector index also, no problem. We, we could have... A, but I thought that because Valmet is so big company in Finland, that it, the big company should be compared with the other big companies. So you have the freedom to, cha to, to, cha to take the index of your choice. I thought that maybe I take the top 25 companies index. And what I do here, look here, click indexes. And when you click the indexes, you find that there is a drop down menu here. And here you can find out that which are the big indexes in Nordic. There is a 
top 40 Nordic companies. There is a large cap, cap companies. Uh, then there are uh, Icelandic companies index. There is a Swedish, can you see SEC here? Swedish kroner, it means these are the top Swedish companies. Then there's a DKK, any idea? Danish kroner, Danish companies. And likewise, and wherever you see EUR, it means these are the Euro, 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 not European, Euro. Because Finland is the only country in Nordic which has Euro, its currency. So therefore, we pick up the index of a choice. And here you can see that there is Helsinki 25, top 25. I don't pick up Iceland. I don't pick Stockholm. I was thinking that I shouldn't compare Walmart with the Swedish and the other companies because I, I want to compare Walmart with the other top Finnish companies. That's why I took Helsinki 25 index. Helsinki means all the top Finnish 25 companies. And by the way, when you click this, uh, you can even know who are these uh, top 25 companies. And this is the list of the alphabetical. These are the biggest 25 companies in Finland. And of course, Walmart is one of them. You can make a mistake. You can pick up a company, but you pick a wrong index. Imagine I pick up a company which is not even figuring in this 25 index. Then I there's a mismatch. So always pick up the index in which that company lies. Hmm? And it's proved that now Walmart is in top 25. So I didn't make any mistake by picking up Helsinki 25 index. Sound sense? Okay. And technique is same because you want to have the data in Excel, right? You want to have data in Excel. What I did here, once again, I went to the history. Where is history? Ah, historical price. Yeah. Once you use it a few times, you'll be, you will be pro. Look, what day did we choose? Um, 12th of September, I think. We have to keep the same dates as we chose in case of Walmart data. So the index and the date, those, they should be matching, okay? What date did we pick? We picked up 12th of September. Was it 12th of September? So the month should be 9th. And this was 22. So you can customize it. It's not a big deal. And then by default, it comes this. Mm -hmm. Are we right? Are we, are we on board? And I want to give a shock now. Mm -hmm. I don't know about your computers, but yesterday when I was doing it, Actually, it's fine. Oh, today's working. Yeah, so it's fine. Look, this is the data we got. Are you recording? Yes. Yeah, good, good. Keep, keep it doing. Because I want to teach them a little bit of function of Excel also alongside because it's getting recorded. So you might come across the same problems, which I did. I came across a problem yesterday. I came across a problem yesterday. Remember, in the Finnish, and, and, and once again, we delete everything else. All we need to keep is this thing. This is R. And then we can copy and paste to the main sheet. Yeah, are we fine? But there's a problem. The problem is that in, fin in Finland, generally, uh, we use the comma as a separator between euros and cents. But here, there is the com here comma is coming as a thousand separator. This, I, I can't put two commas in one figure. It has to be one comma, right? And also I know from my experience that if you have a dot decimal, uh, it doesn't work in Finnish computers. So it means that I need to move the position of comma from somewhere else, from somewhere else to somewhere else. And I need to get rid of this dot. This dot can be a trouble. So what I do here, I select the whole column and there's a very nice function called Mm, 
I don't know whether you do, how you do, but I, I normally use this function and it, it works quite well. Um, there is a, can you see here this lens? It says replace. It says what? Replace. I want to replace, first of all, I want to completely get rid of this dot. I don't want this dot at all. So what I did, replace what? Dot. With what? With nothing. With nothing. I don't want dot at all, okay? So what I do here, make sense? That's all we need now. Now we have everything, but there's no, there's still, <laughs> still not everything. There's still not everything actually. There is a, um, we need to, oh my gosh. Are we fine? I this thing is that I want to replace. I want to get rid of commas. Yeah, so you're right. So what I do here, replace comma with nothing, replace all. Okay, now the thousand separator comma is gone. And now what we do, now we replace decimal with comma. And now we get the number exactly the way we should get. And then I copy and paste or cut and paste this column and bring it, bring it here. Mm -hmm. So these are little steps. They look very big, but they are not big when you do it because if, as long as you know the steps, it's fine. Okay, all right, good. Well, you can apply those shortcuts. And then like we calculated, like we calculated the Volmith vol return, again, the index value itself is not, um, and by the way, these are the same dates, so don't worry about it. So like we calculated the, the stock return, we also calculate the index return here. Again, by using the same formula, uh, natural logarithm, uh, bracket, the current value divided by the previous value, and then click OK, and you have this white circle, white cross, and when it becomes black, just click it, it will go all the way down. Mm -hmm. So you'll find it in the bottom right corner, and you click this, it goes all the way down. Okay, so Zara said, now we want to make some comparisons. Let's see the reality check. And now I can see if it, let's zoom out. Yeah. So here you can find out that the minimum price, the minimum price of Valmith in the last one year has been 20 euros and 14 cent. And how do you do it? Use the minimum function and select the data. Mm -hmm. The maximum price of Valmith has been, once again, use max function. The maximum price has been 32 uh, euros and 30 cents. The average price has been something about 26 euros and 52 cent. And the price change of the previous day, like the price change is that if you bought the stock price on 12th of September 22 and you sold it. On 11th of September 23, 
then you can find out that the price change has been, you know. So if you bought it on 12th of September and you sold it on 11th of September, is it good for you or bad for you? Huh? Um, because you bought something, Sarah, you bought something last year on 12th of September and you spent 25 euros and 18 cent. And when you are selling it a year later, you get how much? It's like you invest one euro and you get 91 cents back. This way, let's think it this way. Yeah, yeah. So you, you understand the idea now, right? Good, very good. And the same thing, the same way, the same way we find the return, well, that's fine, it's not a big deal, but the idea, I hope you understand the idea. Yeah, you understand the idea? Yeah, remember. And same way, you can find the maximum um, index value, the minimum index value has been 4201. Um, the maximum value has been 5068. The average value of the index has been this. And even if you look at uh, the index values, so imagine you invested in the index. Yeah, you invested in the index. Uh, you paid some 4,612 euros. Yeah, the overall index. And when you sold it, after one year, you get 4,377. And you find out that it's like a, it's like saying that you spend, you invested one euro last year and you your, your wealth is now 94 cents worth. Yeah. Make sense? Are we good? Are we good? So the price, very important thing is called volatility. Did we discuss yesterday when we, when we had the financial management lesson? Yeah. And I told that the return, if you only compare the return, that's only one side of the story. To complete the story, we also need risk. Volatility is measuring the firm's market, the, 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 the total risk you are exposed to. And here you can see my comment. Volatility is an expression, but we use a statistical measure called standard deviation to find volatility or risk. We find, we use standard deviation to calculate the volatility, uncertainty, slash risk. Okay. So what we do here. Uh, we do basically nothing much. <laughs> we just do some uh, basic function. And you can see here what I did. Uh, I just typed in standard. You know, once you start typing, the, don't type too fast, is equal to when you start typing some letters slowly. Yeah. You can find the drop down menu, pick up standard deviation S. S means for the sample, it's a sample. And then pick up the data, choose it, and find out. And then you can find for this and technically for all the things. You can find out one thing that overall it appears um, that for the, for the stock return, uh, Valmet has been more volatile than the overall index. You can see it's 19%. No, 1.9%, and this is 0.9%. If I compare it, you can you can convert it to percentages, no problem, no big deal. Yeah, it's it's not a big deal. But again, we are not concluding anything. We are not concluding anything. It's a, like a bird eye view. We're only having some glimpses 
but we still don't advise anything to our investor. If a, if a client, if you become a financial analyst and some client comes to you, okay, maybe you don't even show these figures to him or her because it's just an idea, nothing else. Okay, uh, Those things which I highlighted with some colored part, that is something you will show to your clients. clients yeah? Look at that. We have a concept called correlation. Correlation. Have you heard about correlation in the school level somewhere? What is correlation? The correlation is showing the degree and direction of two variables. So it could be possible that the two variables are going in the same direction. They increase together, they decrease together. Then the correlation is positive. No, if they increase together and the decrease together, but if one increase and the other decrease and the one decrease and the other increase, then correlation is said to be negative. Okay, and here you can see that the degree of the correlation is 48% and direction is positive. It means that both Walmith and the index are 48 percent. Their movement is 48 percent together. Their co-movement is 48 percent together. Does it make sense? Do you find any correlation example in the real life? I mean, of course, it's a real life, but can you find some correlation example in the non-financial world as well? Mm -hmm. Some non-financial examples? Yeah, that's one thing, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's one, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that, that's a good way. Uh, you can have the, if you want to make some sociology research, you can find the, uh, and you want to have some studies of some spouses, um, the husband, wife, so you can have an age of husband and age of wife. And if the correlation is positive, it basically means that older the husband, older the wife. And if the correlation is negative, it means that the older people have younger wives and the younger husbands have the older. I mean, this type of correlation you can find. Similarly, um, you can have the data of, uh, if you go to the police office and you find that, that what has been in the last 20 years in Uvascula, how many crimes have been committed? Mm -hmm. So you find the data yearly, the crimes committed. And you ask that super cop that, can you also give me the data of how many police people have been in Uvascula? Mm -hmm. And then you find out that, is it so that with the more recruitment of police office officers, the crime rate has gone down or is it opposite? So you can find some correlation between the two. Yes, sir. Yes, um, if the value is higher, what are the pros and cons? It means that they are very much correlated. I mean, they're, they're strongly related. Uh, let me give you one example. And now it's, this example is from the financial world. The theory of finance say that never invest all the money in one stock. Diversify. So in other words, if you invest in two stocks, you are safer than investing in one stock. Mm -hmm. Now, we go by the literal meaning, two stocks are better than one stock. But what happened is that you invest in Coke and Pepsi. They are so similar. They're so similar. And when you find the stock return of Coke and Pepsi, you find that it's almost 0 0.999. There's no diversification. So if you want to improve the quality of your diversification, always pick up the stocks in the portfolio with a lower correlation. Then you are really purely 24 carat diversified. Like many people say that gold and oil are negatively correlated. Whenever the gold price go up, the, the crude oil goes down and vice versa. Hmm? 
Okay, so many people say that gold and uh, because either if, if one loses, the other gains, so you are safer. Yeah, you get my point? Yeah, so correlation is very important if you want to check the quality of your diversification. Even if you pick up five stocks, duck, if you pick up five stocks, 10 stocks, imagine you have picked up you go by the book and you say, you know what? 10 stocks are better than one stock. And all those 10 stocks are in the airline. You have Finnair, you have KLM, you have Lufthansa, you have Ryanair, you have everything. Guess what? All the macroeconomic, all the political business factors which affect Ryanair affects almost all the airline companies. So there's no diversification. However, you have three stocks, Coke, GlaxoSmithKline, yeah, and let's say BP. You are diversified. Is the correlation in this time in handles the risk of the portfolio? Exactly. So if you want to have a portfolio to cover up your risk, Never have those stocks in the same portfolio, which are too correlated. Given the choice, always pick up the one with the lower correlation. Negative, negative is even better, <laughs> but you rarely get negative correlation. Statistics, we do. It's called regression coefficient. Regression coefficient. The difference between the correlation and the regression is that in regression, we decide that one is the cause variable and other is the effect variable. One is affecting. Look, in correlation, we say both are correlated. They are together or they are opposite. But we never say that one is determining the future or the, the luck or the fate of the other. I said the stock return of Coke and Pepsi are highly correlated. I didn't say that Pepsi's stock return is affecting the Coke's stock return. Did I say this? There is a cause and effect in regression. There's a cause and effect in regression. Tell me something. If you have one company, Walmart, data and then you have the whole of the market data is it walmith affecting the market or is it the market affecting the walmith who is more likely to affect who the big one it means that we know already our our common sense says that it's a walmith it's the the index stock return which would be affecting walmith it means that we have two variables we have an independent variable and we have a dependent variable. Dependent means who is affected and the independent is who is affecting. In mathematics books, you might have seen the one who is dependent is called Y and the one who is uh, independent is called X. That is why often in the maths book, we see this function Y, is a function of x. It means x in this case is uh, OMX 25 return. That is determining y. And what is y? Walmith return. Make sense? I can do one thing for a few moments. Uh, after I explain regression, we take a short break. What I'm going to do now, this lesson is very important because, and you. You don't have to learn everything today. That is why I'm recording. Uh, when you start learning by yourself, you can take some pauses and, you know, it, 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 take, it will take you a few days before you, you know, process it in your mind. Now, what I'm going to do is, I still want to discuss more of, of uh, regression. And I'm going to do something like this. The whiteboard. Regression says that one variable, sorry. The one variable is y is a function of x. When I say y is a function of x, it sounds very mathematical. 
to make it more non-mathematical, I should say y depends on x. Does it make sense? It says y values depends on x values. And I and if you see the if you see the graphs, we always plot y on the vertical axis and x on the horizontal axis. I hope you are familiar. You understand that? We never do opposite, right? And then we have an equation of straight line. Let's call it a straight line. Yeah. And the equation of the straight line says that y is equal to. I hope your knowledge of your high school mathematics would arise. Alpha plus beta x. Alpha is the intercept and beta is the slope. Who can recall this knowledge from your high school maths? Is the dependent variable? X is independent. Alpha is the intercept and beta is the slope. Hmm? Who have any doubt about it? Who have there's no there's a reason why I'm I'm dealing with the with these uh, alphas and betas here. There's a reason for it. The reason is that we measure risk slash volatility in finance by using a statistics called standard deviation. Standard deviation, but we have two types of risk in finance. One is the firm risk and the other is the market risk. The firm risk is that market is fine. Everything, there is no recession. The, the markets are going down very, very well. Everything is fine. Uh, macroeconomics is doing great job, but still one company is performing better than the other. When the market is up, does it mean that all the companies become heaven? No. Some companies still do bad job. And why they do bad job? Because maybe they have a bad leaders. Maybe they're not making good strategy. Maybe they are not improving their products. Maybe their innovation is horrible. Right? And at the same time, there can be a company which is marvelous, amazing, great innovative company, but the market is so down, so bad. The interest rates are rising so much. Inflation is rising so much that this great company with all the best managers, the top class CEO, uh, very high R&D, the best machinery, even that company is doing horrible. Is this because of the company's fault? No, it's because of the market's fault. So we have the market risk and we also have the firm risk. Beta is a measure of the market risk. Beta, which is called slope, is a measure of market risk. Are we good? Beta is, remember now, look, again, you are moving towards from a First, you are a layperson, then you have some knowledge of finance, and now you are becoming professionals. First, you know, oh, yes, there is a risk and return. Oh, yeah, there is a risk. And then you know that, you know what, risk is not, all the risks are not same. Some risk can be classified as the company's own bad policies. And some risk is called that you are the best, but the market is bad for you. Unfortunately the market risk is very high. So it means that now you're splitting the risk into market risk and non-market and the firm risk. By the way, just to add to your vocabulary, um, if I stop sharing it, just to add to your vocabulary, market risk is called systematic risk, right? And the risk which come only from the company itself is called 
unsystematic. Opposite of systematic is unsystematic risk. So the systematic risk is a risk which come from the market and the unsystematic risk, which is a homegrown, the company's own problems risk. Make sense? And remember, a recap, if you want to see the total risk of the company, then what do you see? Which statistics you use? Total risk. Standard deviation. Standard, like yeah, the, the one you did already. Look, you did. Standard deviation. But if you want to find the company's systematic risk, now, now you're separating the risk into systematic and unsystematic. Then what you do? Then you use the, then you use the slope. Slope. And see what I did. C column is the Valmeth stock return. We always take the Y first and then X. And F column is what? The stock return or the index return, or which is S and what do we have? It's like a, it's a OMX 25. And then we find out. So the known wise, the uh, remember on the Y values, we took the dependent variable and on the X values, we took the independent. And as Sarah said, that independent value is uh, the index, the market, the big, and the Y value is the company's values, which is Walmith. Okay. And when we do this, so it, it means now you have to select two columns in the one formula. It comes to be, and slope is what? Slope is what you have seen already. Uh, where was that? I, I quickly recap. Uh, Beta is a measure of slope in mathematics, but in finance, it measures what? It measures how much, look at the, just see where the uh, cursor is moving. This shows that how much Walmart stock return is affected by the market, which is OMX 25, right? And that is measured by beta. And this is exactly why, this is why I, I used regression coefficient. I also wrote in brackets beta. It can be called beta as well. And to calculate it, I use the slope function. So I am telling you now that why we are writing slope. If you start looking by beta, it doesn't show up. You have to use the slope function to find out. The, and guess what? 0 0.95 is the beta, okay? 0.95% is the beta. It basically means that uh, 0.95, interpretation of 0.95 is that 0.95. So if I have one more sheet, and this time I can use actually uh, the text. So I can say that Walmith return, depending on OMX 25 return. And beta is 0 0.95. In other words, it basically means that, now I want to draw the, this thing. Yeah. So basically it means, let's call it Y. And let's call it X. It basically means that when the whole stock market, which is OMX 25, rise by 1%, Walmart goes up by 0 0.95%. But if the whole market goes down by 1%, Walmart goes down by 0.95%. The question is, is it high risk, low risk, or medium risk? 
If your beta is more than one, it's a high risk investment because then the company is moving too much in response to the market movement. If it is between 0 0.75 to one, it's a moderate medium risk. And if it is below 0 0.75, it is, you can say low risk. We did it, exactly. So now you can recall the information and let's see, your beta is now 0 0.95. Can I say so? Your beta is 0 0.95. And as you can see, my comment here. Oh no, what I'm doing? What did I do? Uh, pause. Um, Add zoom. Oh, yeah, but I first zoom, but if I have some very funny type of thing. Um, what did I do? I don't know. Do I go a step backwards? Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. All right. Um, it's zero point, and I wrote here Walmart is a medium market risk investment. Why it's medium? Anybody? Any suggestion? Because it's between. Exactly. So it's it's even though it's medium, but it's a little bit closer to risk. It's like a uh, high medium, like like upper middle class, lower middle class. So it's more like upper medium risk. So it's not risky, but it's on the bottom line risky investment because the beta is and which risk are we talking about here? Companies own problems? No, market risk. And what is market risk? By the way, inflation, exchange rate fluctuations. Uh, unemployment, uh, interest rate go up and down, uh, inflation, exchange rate, unemployment, what else? Political risk, even environmental risk. So everything which is outside the four walls of your company is a market risk. Okay, so 0 0.95 is the risk that we are exposed to. So we take a 10 minutes break. So we come back. So. Um, we will be uh, doing the rest of the things uh, next week. So remember that this topic recording would be in two parts. So thank you very much for today, your patience and your, your enthusiasm.